Hi guys, my name is Rosita. I'm one of the singing teachers here on Tech Lessons. Today's topic is going to be on common frustrations on singing. Now, what I'd like to do personally, especially for my new students, is prepare them. I tell them what to expect so they won't necessarily freak out later. Because um, people think that they're on their own where in fact they are not millions of people have the same frustrations as i'm sure you guys have going through your singing journey so let's go over some common frustrations that everybody goes through all right let's talk about common frustration number one when i begin to relax my throat using my diaphragm correctly and for my head for singing, I find myself yawning. Awesome! That is a fantastic, fantastic thing. So, we're talking about breathing here. So, as for those that have been watching my videos, I go over the same thing about breathing. As we inhale, as we take in the breath, we're going to expand our belly outwards. Our diaphragm is just in between our stomach and um, our ribs okay so as we expand our stomach outwards with the mouth open our lungs expand taking more air in as you would taking a shallow breath by raising your chest and your shoulders that's a misconception that we're supposed to do that yes our lungs are in the chest but that does not mean we have to raise them up to breathe. We actually intake less breath by doing so. So always take a belly breath. And that's why you're finding, that's why you're going to find yourself yawning more. All right. Frustration number two. I have good breathing technique. Both my tongue and jaw is relaxed. However, I tighten up anyways. Well, sorry to say is that your breath technique, it's not good. I'm sorry. Going back to it, when you're doing proper breath, you're going to feel a freedom right here an openness so when you're taking that correct breath that seemed free but if you're if something comes out like this stop you're you're hurting yourself you're holding you're hurting your vocal cords um so make sure you guys have proper posture shoulders back and down not raising the chest like a penguin, but keep your spine aligned. So if you guys take dance class, you know exactly what I mean, right? Keep the senna. Then expand your belly outwards. And as you exhale, and that's when your voice comes out, slowly pull that stomach in, pull those abs in. And that's going to help provide a freedom in your voice. Mind you, Bad habits die hard. It is going to take some time. All right. Oh, I do not like this common frustration, but hey. My past singing teacher told me to use my nose to breathe in order to sing, but I still feel tension. We are not supposed to use solely our nose to breathe. Because for this reason, if you use your nose only to breathe before you sing, you're going to automatically raise your chest and your shoulders, taking shallow breaths, which is automatically going to cause tension on your chest and your throat area. Okay? Use your mouth. Now, as, as um, putting into my past vocal coaches 
scientifically, the nose have smaller holes in your face, so therefore we take less air in. Our mouth is a bigger hole in our mouth, so we're able to take more air in. That was her scientific explanation, and it stuck with me since, because it's so true. So let's try this. Breathe through your nose. Automatically, my chest, but my shoulders is breathing. I'm feeling tension. And a little bit of like, oh my gosh, I need more air. Now, let's try. Mouth open. Even if you're raising your chest and your shoulders, you're still taking more in. But let's try using a quote unquote diaphragm. Let's do a belly breath. So belly expanding outwards. And the belly going in as you exhale. And most of you are probably yawning. Funny how that works. All right, now this, this one will probably relate to a lot of people. I'm completely tone deaf. I am not getting on pitch. Does it sound like you, maybe? Well, I coach hundreds of students a year. Yet, do I have to find one that is legitimately tone deaf? Yes, you heard me correctly. I still yet have to legitimately meet a tone deaf person. So, what am I saying is that tone deafness is actually a rare cognitive disorder. It is a form of brain damage, which sometimes may be caused by a brain injury. The disorder is called amusia, meaning not musical. Again, I'm going to repeat, this is a rare disorder. So I will tell you this, most likely you guys are not tone deaf. Yay, you guys must be happy, right? Okay, so to obtain pitch, it's nothing more of a coordination between the ear and the brain. So, now that doesn't mean, because with amusia, they cannot distinguish pitch at all. But like, well, me too, that that's my problem. No. So, 90% of the reason of what causes um, issues with, with tone deafness, quote unquote, is because of hesitation and fear. Now, 90% of us either has been told that we don't sing well or, oh, you're off pitch, um, stop singing. It's like, oh, you don't sound good. Some form of negative factor. And continuing hearing these this negativity, this negative comments, as a physical result, the voice behaves like it, if it cannot reach the pitch. So, find a vocal coach, one that you like. Maybe, hopefully, it's me. Um, now, there's a bunch of, there is actually a bunch of great vocal coaches. Um, you can find them here on Take Lessons. And we will help you. You guys just need patience with yourself. If you can speak, you can sing. Okay? Do not let anyone tell you differently. For those, yes, people are going to have easier time of obtaining pitch and others 
not so much but as long as you do the practices put some time like a minimum maybe of 10 minutes just working on pitch it's going to help you a lot and you will find yourself improving week by week okay all right here's one that I've been getting a lot I feel like I'm backtracking when taking lessons I feel like I sang better before am I doing something wrong well sometimes we have to go backwards to go forwards we are tweaking out the bad habits so we can start with a new slate and it is then when when you will hear a massive difference in your voice and also a person is so used to what they had sounded before so anything new people think that they're doing it wrong or backtracking quote unquote also when one becomes more aware of the physicalities of singing we automatically think something is wrong too singing is a sport you will feel the training like if you were practicing a sport and another factor to this is that what we hear ourselves is going to be different from what a third party or someone else is going to hear that's why we are our own worst critics okay again I encourage you guys to seek a vocal coach okay now last but not least I will never be able to sing you have to believe in yourself okay like I mentioned and I'm gonna say this again if you can speak you can sing and really it's just bringing some of your speaking voice sustaining that pitch and adding cool colorations to it singing is not about being pretty pretty will come after once you learn the techniques but even those quote-unquote natural singers those with a natural talent trust me they still have to go to a vocal coach there's a lot of things that they have to improve on and also singing you're not going to be you're not going to have a voice like Christina Aguilera overnight it's going to take time know that yes you can do it if someone says that you can't do it well are they a vocal coach I mean have they really studied singing know the anatomy and physiology of it the psychology of it if your if your answer is probably not it's like going to a construction worker and asking them for medical advice I would probably not do that maybe for a chiropractor but not for medical advice okay if you guys have any questions please do not hesitate to ask I am here for you guys please check out my profile on takelessons.com there is a button that you can click on that says ask a question all right guys hopefully I'll get an opportunity to talk to you soon all right take care guys have a great weekend bye